Now at 6.30, a family is suing a West Macon Walmart for the death of a man last year. Hear how the situation is impacting surrounding businesses. I, you know, I can't imagine how frustrating and hurtful that has to be. A new law could mean closure for families across our state who still don't know what happened to their loved ones. Thanks to the changes it makes for law enforcement. And great things come in pairs, right? Why two Bibb students are celebrating a victory as they gear up to walk across the stage for, gra for graduation. And hold on to your hats. If you think yesterday was windy, just wait for this afternoon. A wind advisory in place. I'll show you how strong the gusts will be and how long that'll last. 13 WMAZ morning starts now. Good morning and happy Tuesday. It is now 6.30 on the second day of May. Thanks for joining us. I'm Caitlin Heck here with Wanye Reese and meteorologist Alex Forbes. I mean, an absolutely beautiful day that we have here on tap, mm -hmm. but a windy day, but we definitely want to go ahead and shout out all of our teachers. It's yes. National Teacher Appreciation yeah. Day. We love you all so much and we just tip our hats to everything that you all are doing for our children. We're tipping it on purpose. The wind's not blowing it. Yes. it. <laughs> you, might, you might see a little bit of both according yeah. to Alex today, though. <laughs> exactly. Man, I tell you what, yesterday there was no secret about it. It was windy, but hey, check out this sunrise. Yeah, it is going to be a great Tuesday here across central Georgia. As long as you can deal with the wind, that's going to start right about the noon hour. As of now, we're not looking at a really a strong sustained wind, much less any wind gusts across central Georgia. However, through the course of the day ahead, we are going to be looking at gusts up to 35. Eatonton down to Cordelia, Vidalia over to Thomaston and Butler. All of central Georgia, that wind advisory is going to be in place until about 8 p.m. tonight. 46, a chilly morning here in Macon. 47 in Warner Robins. 46 now in Dublin. Just about 30 minutes to an hour ago, Dublin got down to 43, 46 in Sandersville and in Wrightsville, 49 over in Rochelle this morning. Now, the satellite and radar picture is quiet across the southeast this morning. We're talking about a mix of 40s, 50s, even 60s down to the south. All of that to say there's no big system off to the west coming our way, at least not in the next uh, five to seven days. Today, looking at 76 for the high temperature, sunny, but the story is this. It is still going to be windy at times. Those gusts up to 35 sunrise here in the next few minutes. We'll talk a lot more about what to expect today and how long this wind is going to last in just a moment. Oh, thank you, Alex. The family of a man shot and killed outside of West Macon Walmart says the store is unsafe and attracts crime. Someone shot Ronnie LB last August in the store's parking lot near Harrison Road. Now his family is suing Walmart, arguing there weren't enough safety measures to keep LB and other shoppers safe. But the perception that the area isn't safe is already impacting another business. Late in the night, I have to walk the customer to the parking lot because they're scared to be here. That's Taha, and he says that some customers at his deli and smoke shop just don't feel safe because of the deadly shooting. Now Albie's family is suing Walmart, arguing the company didn't do enough to keep their shoppers safe. Lawyers Catherine McArthur and Jessica Edmonds say the company knew the parking lot was a hot spot for crime. I'm in the neighborhood, but just at the Walmart, phone, the calls uh, to law enforcement in the last two years have shown more than 30 incidents of violent crime occurring there. The Bibb County Sheriff's Office declined to comment because of the ongoing lawsuit. Well, a Valdosta family whose daughter was assaulted at a rest stop now warning others to look out for signs. The Hester family was headed to a Braves game but stopped at rest area 19 on I-475. In the restroom, the family's eight-year-old daughter came out of a stall before her mother. Then two 12-year-old girls pulled her hair and covered her mouth. The state-run rest stop on 475 does not have cameras or security. Major Brad Wolf with the Sheriff's Office says it's a warning to just always be alert. A lot of the tips are the same as we would give during the holiday shopping season. Be alert, be aware of your surroundings. If something doesn't look right, it's probably not. If somebody looks suspicious, you know, you may not want to go up to the area they're at or whatever. And you can stay in groups if you can. A wolf says the Bibb Sheriff's Office patrols the rest stop, but not regularly. The two girls were charged with simple battery and later released back to their mother. Well, a Macon man's in jail today accused of killing 72-year-old Lewis Moore in a car wreck last September. This isn't the first time investigators accused Anthony McNear Jr. of harming someone with his car. We actually discovered this after one of Moore's sisters contacted us trying to find out if someone ever got charged in her brother's death. We not only learned deputies arrested Anthony McNear in Moore's case, but also in a case that happened nine months earlier, Caitlin. Now, an indictment accuses him of shooting at two people, then ramming his car intentionally into their car in January of last year. He's charged with four counts of aggravated assault, but bailed out of jail a month later. Then in September, investigators say as he drove 92 in a 35 mile an hour speed zone on Emory Highway, 
He crashed into 17-year-old Lewis Moore, who was turning onto Fort Hill Street, killing him. District Attorney Anita Howard says her office will ask the court to deny McNear's bond during a hearing on Thursday. Today, Fort Valley Police are looking for someone who killed a man there. Fort Valley Police say it happened around 4.30 Sunday morning on Camellia Boulevard. They say 20-year-old Moray Ross walked to a nearby convenience store but collapsed. He died at a local hospital from his injuries. If you have any information on this case that can help out the Fort Valley Police Department, give them a call. Their number is 478-825-3383. That number again for you at the bottom of your screen. It's 478-825-3383. A man is now in jail for a shooting that happened over the weekend in Macon. 43-year-old Emil Wilson was shot after someone fired shots in a home on the 1400 block of 4th Avenue just after 7 a.m. Saturday. Investigators say they connected 20-year-old Isaiah Bailey to the shooting after he agreed to questioning. He's now charged with murder and being held in the Bibb County Jail without bond. Today, the Bibb County Sheriff's Office is investigating a crash involving a car and a motorcycle. It happened on Thomaston Road near Heathrow just after 9.30 last night. The sheriff's office says a Hyundai venue was turning left into a Circle K on Thomaston Road when it hit a motorcyclist. The 63-year-old riding the motorcycle was taken to the hospital. The sheriff's office says he's in critical but stable condition. The driver of the Hyundai was not hurt. Right now, the traffic accident is still under investigation. Well, jury selection continues for a Jones County doctor accused of prescribing opioids that allegedly killed two patients. Thomas Sachi's lawyer said his federal trial in Columbus could last a month. The defense team's list of questions for potential jurors shows some of the issues coming up in this complex case. For example, defense lawyers want to ask jurors if they've watched several movies about drugs and addiction, like The Pharmacist, Painkiller, Dope Sick, and Train Spotting. The lawyers plan to ask if people believe everything they read on social media and if they think that law enforcement is always right. They're also asking if the possible jurors believe all pain management doctors are criminals, drug dealers, or run pill mills. On the defense lawyers list, whether people think drug addiction is a sickness and whether the federal government or a doctor should get pain management policy, jury selection is expected to take several days. Statue faces drug and money laundering charges. 637, go ahead and get a check of your state news. A bill signed into law by Governor Brian Kemp last Friday allows families of homicide victims to request law enforcement agencies to look into long unsolved cases. Law enforcement can reopen and use new technology that could solve these cases. The bill is called the Coleman Baker Act and honors families like Rhonda Sue Coleman's. The 18 year old from Hazelhurst went missing in May of 1980. Her body was found in neighboring Montgomery County three days later. Before the law, cold cases were checked on a volunteer basis. The GBI says they have more than 100 unsolved cold cases. To go 10 or 20 or 30 years sometimes without information, I, you know, I can't imagine how frustrating and hurtful that has to be. Hopefully this will bring closure for some of these families. Now the bill provides more than $5 million for the GBI to establish a cold case unit. Well, new this morning, the Fulton County District Attorney now has a new deadline to respond to a motion for former President Donald Trump's legal team. The former president and his team are trying to quash a special grand jury report about his possible interference in the 2020 election. DA Fonnie Willis originally had until Monday to file a response. Now she has until May the 15th. Just days ago, one of the fake electors who is also under investigation by the DA's office joined Trump's motion. The judge is now giving the DA extra time to respond to both complaints. While post-certified officers can soon get a job more quickly at the Warner Robins Police Department, the council voted on a plan to waive several tests. Under the ordinance, officers would still have to take a fitness test. However, it would not be timed. Chief Roy Whitehead says officers would also be waived of taking written tests and role play exercises that they would so that they would have an assessment center. Whitehead says because of the strict rules, if officers were late on their test by even a second, they could not be hired. This eliminates a step that few agencies require. Without the extra test, they can get qualified officers sworn in quicker to help meet their shortage. In the last three months, they've added about 13 people but are still looking to hire an additional 26 officers. We're just looking at every opportunity to make us more effective and more efficient and to shorten the hiring process so that we can get people on board, and that's the goal. Mayor LaRonda Patrick says it doesn't make it easier to get in the door, but it does make the process more reasonable and streamlined. It's graduation season, a huge reason to celebrate accomplishments for students and a reason to continue to celebrate, right? Before a couple of Central Georgia students, there's another big reason 
to celebrate. We're going to share that for you later on. And a Macon student hit a huge milestone in reading and it got him some pretty big attention. Those stories and more are coming up after the break. First though, the time is 640 on your Tuesday morning. As we enter, the, it's the last month of school for these kids. It's so hard to believe. I know, it's absolutely amazing. And something, especially for all those seniors out there, enjoy this time, mm -hmm. enjoy graduation. Right. Because being an adult, it's so much fun, but there's so many times where I look back and I'm like, man, I feel like sometimes I took that time for granted. Yeah, just enjoy every single yes, moment of this. every moment. Uh, that's right, and you know what? College graduations get started this week. Wow. GCSU is Same Friday Same to them. Saturday. Enjoy it. Soak it all up. Yeah. Because when is. those bills start coming. Exactly. <laughs> right. Yeah. It is coming quickly. And hey, I'll tell you what. My graduation from college was really early. I graduated on April 29th. Wow. So at this point, yeah, it was the COVID year. So it was... Uh, it was a little weird, but yeah. Hey, check this out. A great sunrise to get your Tuesday started. We're looking live over downtown. The sun officially coming above the horizon here in just the next few minutes, and it is going to be rising on what is going to be a very windy day. A wind advisory in effect from noon until about 8 p.m. This is going to be from Jasper and Putnam counties all the way down to Dooley, Crisp, Wilcox County, from Soperton and Vidalia back over towards Butler and Thomaston, all of central Georgia included in this through the day ahead. Now, let's time out the wind gusts going to be talking about them getting going really right around the noon hour. That's when the wind advisory kicks in. So at 1 p.m. 20 to 25, but it's later this afternoon where we get 30 to 35 in here across central Georgia. Then later on tonight, they'll begin to relax. So a windy afternoon in store for us across the Peach State today. 45 in Monticello, 46 now in Macon as well as in Dublin. It got down to 43 in Dublin just about an hour ago. 48 in Wrightsville, 47 in Warner Robins and 45 in Thomaston this morning. Nothing to speak of on the radar picture and not expect to see much of anything to speak of through the day today. In fact, we're barely going to see any cloud cover across central Georgia. The name of the game today is going to be the wind to the 70 degree mark by the noon hour. We'll call it mid 70s later this afternoon. Maybe a few upper level clouds up near Lake Country in Eatonton through the course of the evening tonight. Then for tomorrow morning, the wind's going to relax a bit. Temperatures, we're going to call it mid to low for, or mid to upper 40s, that is, across central Georgia before we all get back into the 70s, although not quite as warm as we are today for tomorrow afternoon. The windy conditions kicking in once again out of the northwest, and then the wind will relax for Thursday morning. Now Thursday morning, this is when temperatures will get even colder, mid to low 40s, maybe even mixing in a 30 degree temperature before all is said and done, and then right back into the 70s for Thursday afternoon. Now we're going to be dry on Friday, but with mostly cloudy conditions beginning on Saturday, a 20% chance of rain that's going to last through Sunday and Monday as well. But by May standards, our high temperatures are going to be relatively cool. 76 today, 75 tomorrow. Our average high is 82, so 70s for the next three days back above average by the time we get to Saturday. We've been talking about it all morning. The AP exams continue today. The environmental science exam happens later on this morning. Expect temperatures in the 50s warming into the 70s later on today. Sunrise officially here in the next few minutes at 647. 76 will be our high temperature again that average 82 so below that the name of the game today is going to be the wind something similar tomorrow across central Georgia and then we will warm back into the 80s by the time we get to Friday which is also Cinco de Mayo a 20% chance of rain builds in for the weekend and then into next week keeping that 20% chance of rain around on Monday with a high of 83.